uh, last lecture, the Dr. Chen teach you to how to dissect the cerex. Cerex. This slide show you left lung, right lung. Please guess what's the difference? Yeah. Generally speaking, you know the left lung should be should have two lobes. Right lung, you have three. But this guy, left lung and right lung, totally have two. Uh, it's very strange. Uh, but uh, their lobes have a relation with the function. This is us here is uh, the left lung. Here is the superior lobe of the left lung. You can find the atoll like the bubble. Maybe this guy suffers from the disease, maybe TB, uh, tuberculosis. This one, you can find we have removed anterior thoracic wall. You can find very complete periatal layer, periatal layer, covered the both lung. Uh, it's very good. This blood vessel is an internal thoracic blood vessel. The other word, internal thoracic artery, internal thoracic vein, uh, is very good. Uh, is very good. You know, in the thorax, have two parts: a thorax, thoracic wall, and thoracic against. But if we remove the left and right lung, in the middle part, you can find structure, one structure. This is structure we call the mediastinum. Mediastinum. Here is a lateral view of the mediastinum. From this picture, you can find its boundary. Uh, the superior is opening, uh, superior opening of the thoracic cavity. The inferiorly is the diaphragm. Diaphragm. And anteriorly is sternum and cartilage. Uh, cartilage of rib. The posterior part is a thoracic part of the column. Of the column. But the both side is a metiocinum periadium, a periadium layer. But you know, this is structure we call the metiostinum. A metiostinum. In the metiostinum, you can find some again and many connective tissue, such as heart, esophagus, trachea, thoracic duct, thoracic duct, blood vessel, blood vessel, etc. Uh, here you can find metiocinum uh, located between left and right lung. This area uh, we call the metiocinum. Today we will dissect the abdomen. Uh, abdomen. The abdomen also have two parts. The first part is abdominal wall. The second one, abdominal cavity. Uh, abdominal cavity. This is the show us its boundary. Uh, its boundary. Here is a sketch. Uh, sketch. You know, the superiorly is the void process. Cause the arch. 11th and the 12th rib. And the 12th thoracic vertebrae. This one third, uh, this one circle, the superiorly, uh, superior. The inferiorly, you can find, you can find uh, the lumbar, the fifth lumbar vertebrae. The iliac crest, iliac crest, superior anterior iliac crest, uh, superior uh, anterior superior uh, iliac spine. Go on here, inguinal ligament. Yeah, maybe, maybe this one is good. 
This one is good. Sketching about the abdomen. A superiorly zevoid process. Coast arch. 11th, 12th rib. Plus uh, 12th thoracic vertebrae. Uh, the superiorly. The inferiorly, you know, this one, a fifth lumbar vertebrae. Uh, this one, this one, iliac crest. This one, anterior superior iliac spine. This ligament is equinal ligament. This one, pubic tubercle. And uh, pubic crest. Lastly, is pubic symphysis, both sides. Uh, this, this structure consists of the inferior boundary, uh, inferior boundary. But this, this picture shows us the projection of some again in abdominal cavity. Uh, you can know, oh, this one, the red one is liver, or uh, should be liver. Here, gallbladder. Here, stomach. Here, spleen. Here, duodenum, uh, duodenum. Here, small intestine, large intestine. Here is the beginning part of the large intestine, cecum. Close to the cecum, you can find the appendix, uh, appendix. Yeah, this slide also show us some again in our abdomen. Here, anterior view. Here, posterior view. From the posterior view, you can find both kidneys. Uh, kidneys. Then, ureter. Uh, ureter. Etc. Uh, etc. Here, you can find the diaphragm. Uh, the diaphragm divides cervix and the abdomen. Uh, it's a boundary between cervix and the abdomen. This is slide show us the surface anatomy of the abdomen. You can know number one means the void process. Uh, the void process. This one should be anterior made in line. Label the nine, uh, label, label nine, this line. Uh, the number five should be amplicus, uh, amplicus. But this one, this one, this one, this one should be tendinous intersection. Tendinous intersection located in the rectus abdominis. Uh, here, number two <coughs> and three should be a coastal arch, a coastal arch. Here, should be equinal ligament, uh, etc. Uh, this is the surface anatomy of the abdomen. In order, in order to describe the location, uh, neighboring relationship of different again, usually we can separate the abdomen different region. Usually there are two methods separate them. This one show us from the anterior view the abdomen could be divided into nine region, nine region. Here, label the different, different number. Number one and number three is right and left hypochondriac region. Here, epigastric region. But in the middle part, the number four and number six should be right and left lateral region. Number seven and number nine, we call the right and left equino region. This one we call the amplicus, uh, ampli umbilical region. This one we call the hypogastric region. Uh, you can know, or oh, here, this area, you should know, or oh, liver should be here. Uh, liver, the stomach, uh, small intestine, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, rectum, etc. Another method is four regions. Uh, four regions. This region is easy. Uh, usually, 
we can draw two lines, two vertical lines, pass through the umbilicus. Uh, umbilicus, separate abdomen, have four regions. Uh, this one we call the left upper quadrant, short for L U Q. This one we call the right upper quadrant, short for R U Q. This region we call the left lower quadrant, short for L L Q. This area we call the right lower quadrant, usually short for R L Q. Uh, firstly of all, we will introduce the abdominal wall. Uh, usually, the abdominal wall divides into two parts. This area we call the anterior lateral wall. Anterior lateral wall. But this part we call the posterior abdominal wall. Uh, two parts. Uh, anterior lateral wall. Posterior wall. Uh, Two parts, uh, two parts. Here, uh, here is uh, from the specimen. Uh, specimen, you can know the first layer should be skin. Skin. This one and this one should be subcutaneous tissue. But in the subcutaneous tissue, usually have another two layer, superficial layer and deep layer. The superficial layer we call the adipose layer. Adipose layer. The deep layer we call the membranous layer. Membranous layer. But besides skin and subcutaneous layer, we have learned in the system anatomy, anatomy. You know, on the both sides of the anterior meeting line, here should be another muscle. Tell me the name. Rectus abdominis, this one. But on the lateral side, you should know, have another three layer. Now from the superficial to deep, you should know. External oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis. Oh, you know. Uh, Beside, uh, on the both sides of the anterior meeting line, here, uh, rect rect uh, rectus abdominis. But on the lateral side, from superficial to deep, have another three layer, uh, three layer muscle, external abdominal, uh, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, and uh, the transverse abdominis muscle. Here, skin, subcutaneous tissue, Three layer. Uh, three layer means this area, a uh, lateral region. But anterior, here, only one muscle. Uh, one muscle. Number four, we call the transverse fascia. Uh, transverse fascia. Number five, we call the extra peritoneal fascia. Extra peritoneal fascia. Number six, we call the parietal peritoneum. This is slide that shows us the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, I have said about the last lecture, uh, last uh, slide. In the superficial, uh, subcutaneous tissue, have two layer, a uh, superficial layer and deep layer. Here shows us this one, the yellow one, we call the superficial layer. This layer we call the adipose layer. Adipose layer. This layer mainly consists of the adipose tissue. Adipose tissue. From this picture, you can know oh, this layer continues with the other region of the body. Here, superiorly, inferiorly, uh, both sides. But this layer, the green one, this layer, we call the membranous, uh, membranous layer. This layer should be the deep layer of the subcutaneous tissue. But this, this layer 
inferiorly continuous uh, the equinoligament here. But here, uh, here continuous with the subcutaneous tissue of the perineum, uh, perineum. Or from this slide, you know, the subcutaneous tissue is of abdomen divided two layer. Uh, superficial layer is adipose, adipose layer. Deep layer is membranous layer. But usually, the adipose layer we also call the cambrous fascia. Cambrous fascia. The deep fascia we also call the, this layer scapa, scapa fascia. Okay. This slide, uh, this picture show us. Uh, so here, you know, we have removed left side. We have removed the skin. Here should be sub subcutaneous tissue. In the subcutaneous tissue, we should know usually they include the adipose tissue. Cutaneous nerve, superficial vein, and some small artery, uh, some small artery. But uh, the right side, we have removed, we have removed subcutaneous tissue. You can find uh, some muscle, uh, some muscle here, thoracic muscle, here abdominal muscle, uh, abdominal muscle. But the left, the, this one, show us uh, here, you know, oh, we have removed the pectoralis major, here pectoralis minor. Uh, but here, we have removed the anterior layer of the rectus schist. You should know this muscle is rectus abdominis. This is slide from the specimen, uh, from the specimen. You can find the yellow one means cutaneous nerve. While we dissect the cervix, we should know in the cervix, the cutaneous nerve have two types. Here, this one, uh, this one, this one, this one belongs to anterior branch of the intercostal nerve. But this one, this one, this one should be lateral branch of the intercostal nerve. Uh, intercostal nerve. But here, uh, in the upper part of the side, you can find uh, some tributary of the greater saphenous vein and some other cutaneous nerve. This slide, uh, this slide show us, uh, we know, uh, we know. In the cervix, there are sensations uh, innovated by upper six, upper six thoracic nerve. But the lower thoracic nerve from the middle axillary line anterior downward supply the abdomen. I say it again. Uh, totally, there are 12, uh, there are 12 paired thoracic nerve. The upper six, upper six, usually like this, one by one, supply the cervix, uh, cervix. But the lower, uh, the lower six paired thoracic nerve from here, like this, supply the anterior lateral abd abdominal wall. But here, here, this gap, uh, this gap supplied by another nerve, this one and this one. Uh, this two nerve come from the lumbar plexus. Lumbar plexus. The superior one we call the Iliohypogastric nerve. The inferior one we call the 
一块牛肉啊，一两一块牛肉。这是土 ，plus lower six sensing nerve totally supply the anterior lateral abdominal wall. Here, ah,、uh, this slide show us here this one, this one, this other one. You cannot. They are belongs to the lower six thoracic nerve. Here, you should know this nerve located between two muscle. Between what? Between internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominis muscle. This point is very very important. Never forget. The lower six thoracic nerve, their trunk, located between internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominis muscle. Well, we dissect the abdominal wall. Maybe well, we reflect the external oblique muscle. This nerve easily can be fine.、Uh, easily can be fine. This slide show us the anterior, anterior lateral abdominal wall. Their muscles,、uh, we have known. On each side, each side sh should have four muscle. Should have four muscle. A both side of the anterior midline, this muscle and this muscle. You know, all is rectus abdominis. But on the lateral side. From the superficial to deep, have another three. Have another three. The first first layer is external oblique muscle. The second layer is internal oblique muscle. The third layer is transverse abdominis. Transverse abdominis. But ah,、uh, you should know here. We have removed anterior la la anterior layer of the rectus chest. Here,、uh, we have removed anterior layer of the rectus chest. One by one, ah,、uh, in introduce one by one. We have known the first layer is external oblique muscle. This one, this one, but this muscle usually divides the two part. This one in the diagram, this this picture from the specimen, ah、uh, specimen. This guy maybe is very strong, ah、uh, is very strong. You can find on the middle side of this muscle belongs to tendinous part, tendinous part. Oh, muscular, ah,、uh, tendinous part, but on the lateral, this area is muscular part. Well, some guy mentioned the external external oblique muscle. You should know this muscle divided into two parts. On the medial side, is tendinous part. On the lateral side, is muscular part. Ah,、uh, this line means the direction of the muscular fiber. This muscles, muscular fiber, like this, ah,、uh, like this. The tendinous part usually we call the aponeurosis. In other words, the tendinous part usually we call the aponeurosis, ah,、uh, aponeurosis. But here, maybe you can find another opening, ah,、uh, we call the superficial ring. A superficial ring. From this ring, email one structure, spermatic cord, come out from here. If it's a female, is round ligament of the uterus. This is the first layer. Now、uh, this is the first layer of the lateral region of the abdomen. 
The second layer, here, this picture, we have removed external oblique muscle. Show us the second layer, the second layer, internal oblique muscle. The same with the external oblique muscle. This muscle also divides the two parts, medially tendinous parts, laterally muscular parts. But this muscle have a different muscular fiber direction to the external oblique muscle. This muscle's muscular fibers direction like this, uh, not like the external. You know, the external oblique muscle, muscular fiber like this, but the internal oblique muscle like this. Uh, this two muscle to form the across, right angle, uh, right angle, external, uh, internal. Here, the, the yellow arrow means the muscular fibrous direction, uh, direction. Here, we have, here is a cut, cut edge of the external oblique muscle. This is a second layer. The third layer, we have known, the na name is ab transverse abdominis, uh, transverse abdominis. Here, this region, we have removed superficial two layer external, internal oblique muscle. Here, this muscle, we call the transverse abdominis. Uh, this muscle name, as the name suggests, the fiber, the muscular fiber, fiber's direction, transverse. Uh, the external, like this, internal, like this, transverse abdominis, like this, uh, like this. Here, this one, uh, this area, uh, this area. As we know, on both sides of the anterior meeting line have another two, uh, each one, uh, one each side, we call the rectus abdominis. Uh, here, uh, this picture is uh, here is the model uh, with it's the uh, athletes. Uh, athlete. You can find here should be the region of the rectus abdominis. Uh, here, uh, here, this this part is anterior layer of the rectus schist. You know the rectus abdominis enwrapped by tendinous schist. Uh, the tendinous schist have two layer anterior layer and deep layer, a posterior layer, layer. This picture shows us here, we have removed anterior layer of the rectus schist. You can find this muscle, rectus abdominis, located on both sides of the anterior meeting line. Usually, the upper parts is wider than that of the lower part. This muscle, the upper part is wider than the lower part. Uh, lower part. But this one, this white one, this one, this one, this one. Tell me what's the name. This one, this one, this one, this one. Tendiness intersection. Tendiness intersection. Ah, uh, here. Uh, Usually, usually, uh, about this muscle, usually have two to four tendinous intersection, uh, intersection. In other words, intersection actually belongs to the tendon, uh, tendon. Here, muscular part, here, tendon. But this is a small picture, <laughs> also from the specimen, uh, also from the specimen. You can find, uh, have th also have three tendinous intersection, uh, intersection.
this slide shows us the concept of the rectus sheath. Uh, rectus sheath. This one and this one is a trans transverse section of the abdominal wall at a different level. At a different level. This one is about located above the acute line. Acute line. This one belongs to the below acute line. Here, this muscle, this muscle, this muscle, this muscle should be a transverse section of the rectus abdominis. But on the lateral side of this muscle, you can find all three layer muscle, external, internal oblique muscle, transverse abdominis muscle. Each muscle on the med medial side, you should find some tenderness part. We call it aponeurosis. Aponeurosis. Here, here anterior, here posterior, here rectus abdominis. Attention please, here. Uh, here is uh, external oblique muscle. Here, the aponeur aponeurosis, uh, aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle go to the anterior part of the rectus abdominis. It's easy to understand. Pay attention. The second layer, internal oblique muscle, pay attention, here on the medial side to form the two layer tenderness part. One to anterior part. Another one, another go to the posterior part of the muscle. Oh, you know, the internal oblique muscle, uh, uh, the internal oblique muscle is turning the parts, divide the two parts. One, go to the anterior layer. Another, go to the posterior, posterior part of the rectus abdominis. The transverse abdominis muscle, this muscle on the medial side is a tendinous, we call the aponeurosis. aponeurosis. This aponeurosis go to the posterior part, uh, posterior part. Oh, from this, from this picture you know, anterior layer of the posterior layer of rectus abdominis covered by, covered by aponeurosis of three broad muscle. They are aponeurosis, aponeurosis. Posterior layer, posterior of the rectus abdominis formed by fusion of posterior leaf of aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle and aponeurosis of transverse abdominis muscle. But absent in about four to five centimeter below the umbilicus where the aponeurosis of all three muscles form the anterior layer, anterior layer of the lower free border, named the acute line. In other words, here is the umbilicus. Below the umbilicus, about four to five centimeter, this location. Below this point, no posterior layer of the rectus sheath. Where to go? All the posterior layer also go to the anterior. Here, here, ah, uh, you can find if from the above the acute line, this transverse section, you can find the anterior, posterior, totally have two layer tenderness, but at the below acute line, you can find 
So all the aponeurosis of three blood muscles totally go to anterior part of the rectus sheath. Uh, rectus sheath. Below this line, rectus abdominis in contact with the transverse fascia. In other words, here, no aponeurosis directly contact with the transverse fascia. This one. In other words, uh, about the rectus sheath, at the lower le at the, at the lower level, no posterior layer, uh, no posterior layer. In detailed location, should be below the amplicus five me five centimeter, uh, five centimeter. Below this line, no posterior layer of the rectus sheath. Yeah, this slide uh, is similar with the last one. Uh, it's similar with the last one, one by one. Here, here is a tr transverse section of the anterolateral abdominal wall. You should know, yeah, here, here means from here, cut at the level of the amplicus. If we cut transverse section, the transverse Transverse section like this, from the anterior to posterior, you should know the first layer is the skin. Second one, subcutaneous tissue, uh, subcutaneous tissue. This one, rectus abdominis. This is three, from the superficial to deep. Number three, external oblique muscle. Number four, Internal oblique muscle, number five, transverse abdominis muscle. Pay attention. Here, this one, this one is uh, the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. This one is the aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis. This one is the aponeurosis of the internal oblique muscle. But around the rectus abdominis, anterior, posterior, this muscle is wrapped by aponeurosis of other three flat muscles. This picture clearly shows us the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle go to the anterior of the muscle. The transverse abdominis muscle, its aponeurosis go to the posterior part of the rectus sheath. But in the internal oblique muscle, its aponeurosis divides the two parts. One half to the anterior, another half go to the posterior. Uh. In other words, the rectus sheath actually is consists of the aponeurosis of three flat muscle, uh, three flat muscle. This one, uh, this is uh, this this picture is above the acute line. But this one is below the accurate line. Means here, the cut line, uh, the cut line is lower, uh, is lower. Should be below, uh, below the, about the fifth, five centimeter of the umbilicus, uh, umbilicus here. If I cut from here, we will find uh, on the posterior part of the rectus abdominis, no sheath, no sheath. All the aponeurosis go to the anterior part, go to the anterior. After class, uh, while we dissect the cadaver, uh, you will find, uh, you will find. Another concept, uh, Lina Alba. Uh, linear alba. What's a linear alba? 
linear alpha is a tenuous reef, a tenuous reef. Reef means a suture, ah, uh, means a suture. Here, uh, this this side, this side, the both sides, sheath, sheath, to form the unit, uh, to force to form the union, is the middle part, uh, in the middle part, between right and the left direct the abdominis, from the zygoid to the public symphysis, from here to here, uh, from here to here. Uh, is the middle part of the abdomen, uh, abdomen. This structure we call the linear alba, uh, linear alba. It's the fusion, uh, it's the fusion of the aponeurysis of the left and the right three thread muscle, superiorly wide and inferiorly narrow. Yeah, similar. Uh, the, the, the linear alba, uh, in this point, uh, similar with the uh, Muscle, uh, the upper part is wider, the lower is narrower, uh, is narrower. From this picture, uh, you can guess, if, this, if some guy suffer from the, the appendicitis, uh, we have to do an operation, operation. I ask you, uh, if I cut, from here to do an incision. From this linear alba, you should know in this location, no muscle. No muscle. Uh, in some first aid emergency, maybe some injured, injured, uh, maybe uh, is, a, is a car accident, a uh, car accident, uh, maybe some again. Uh, with a larger bleeding, a larger bleeding, we can uh, quickly we can cut from the middle part. Only skin, subcutaneous tissue, linear alba, and fascia. We can quickly to go to the abdominal cavity to save life. But if we cut from the from here, pass through the rectus schist. Rectus, mus uh, rectus abdominis, you should know here, only one muscle, uh, you can know they are, lamp they are layers from a superficial deep. The first layer is uh, also skin, second layer, subcutaneous tissue, third layer, anterior layer of the rectus sheath, then the muscle, uh, rectus abdominis. We can separate this muscle. Uh, don't need a cut, only separate, it's okay. Then cut the posterior layer of the rectus the sheath, then fascia. But if we cut from here, here, uh, from here, you should know have, <laughs> have many layer. Uh, at least they have three muscles, uh, three muscles. So, uh, skin, subcutaneous tissue, deep fascia, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transverse oblique muscle, fascia, and etc. Uh, as a different, different region, we do different incision. You will find a different layer. Uh, you have no. Uh, if we cut from the middle part, easily to go into the abdominal cavity. It's quickly. Uh, usually used for first aid or emergency. Uh, emergency. Oh, uh, you know, if we cut from here, oh, no muscle. If we cut from here, only one muscle. If we cut from here, at least have three muscles. Uh, different region. We do different uh, incision. We we'll pass through parts, pass through the different layer, a uh, different layer. Yeah, here is the summary. Uh, here is the summary. Uh, we have now on the both sides of the anterior midline, line, you will find rectus abdominis. Abdominis. Here, 
anterior leaf, anterior layer of the rectus sheath. Here, tell me the name. Posterior layer of the rectus sheath. But if we we dissect this area, no, post, no posterior layer, uh, no posterior. But here, from a superficial to deep, external, internal oblique muscle, transverse abdominal muscle. Uh, the three muscles have a different muscular fiber direction. External oblique muscle like this, internal oblique muscle like this, transverse abdominis like this. Mm. How to dissect? Uh, how to dissect? Easy. Uh, today is easy. Uh, here is umbilicus. The first uh, transverse incision is one. Second one is one. Then the skin could be divided into four parts. Then reflect uh, like this, 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 this. Uh. Now the first region, uh, dissection of inguinal region. What's the uh, inguinal region? Mm. You have to know the boundary. Uh, you have to know the boundary. Inferiorly, this this inferiorly, you should know why important uh, ligament, inguinal ligament, uh, inguinal ligament. The Superiorly is, is a transverse line. This line passes through anterior superior iliac spine. But the medial, medially is a lateral border of the rectus sheath. This region we call the equinal region. Uh, equinal region. Okay. In equinal region, there is a very important uh, structure we call the equino canal. Equino canal. What's the equino canal? Here is a projection of the equino canal. I draw it by dotted line. Actually, equino canal, not like a canal, actually, the space is a cleft. Uh, it's a cleft. Actually, it's an oblique cleft or passage. It lies above to medial half of the equinal ligament. Here is the equinal ligament. The equinal canal located above to medial side, medial half of the equinal ligament. Usually, have four to five centimeter long. Usually, have four to five centimeter long. In adults and in adults. In this canal, in male, you will find it's spermatic cord. If in female, it's round ligaments of the uterus. The boundary of the equinal canal. Uh, equinal panel, equinal canal usually have four wall, have four wall. Superiorly, inferiorly. Anteriorly, posteriorly, uh, posteriorly. Anteriorly, here we have reflect medially and laterally. The anterior wall is aponeurosis of external brick muscle. The posterior wall here. Actually, the transverse fascia, uh, transverse fascia, mainly. But the roof, roof actually is the inferior border of the two muscle. This two muscle is internal oblique muscle and the transverse abdominis to form the superior, uh, superiorly. This, but the Floor here is equinal ligaments. Uh, equinal ligaments. The equinal 
canal usually uh, have four wall and two opening, uh, two opening. The superficial opening we call the superficial equinal ring. Here, this one, uh, this one. While we remove the subcutaneous tissue from the aponeurosis of the external brick muscle, you will find there is a small, there is a one opening like this. This we call the superficial ring, uh, superficial ring. But the deep inguinal ring here is a posterior view of the abdominal wall. Here is a post posterior view of the abdominal wall. Here. Uh, it's very deep. Uh, it's very deep. This slide show us uh, here superficial ring from the ring. Uh, in male, a uh, spermatic cord come out from here. In the male, female, it's round ligaments. Uh, it's round ligaments. Uh, round ligaments. Here is the uterus, ovary, rung ligament. How to dissect this area? Please cut according to labeled line. To cut the transverse line, pass through uh, and superior anterior iliac spine. Then to the medial, uh, to the medial. This, this cut, please, along the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. Then, reflect laterally. Uh, reflect laterally. Like this. Here is the apple neurosis of the external brick muscle. Here we have reflect the apple neurosis of the external brick muscle. Here should be internal brick muscle, uh, internal brick muscle. Here actually is the anterior wall of the equinal canal. Uh, here actually is a superior wall. Here is a floor. Uh, here is the floor. After reflect the aponeurosis of external brick, uh, brick muscle, you will find there are two important nerves. These two nerves from the lumbar plexus uh, supply the lower part of the, of the abdomen, uh, and, uh, anterior, anterior lateral abdominal wall. This part, small gap, supplied by this nerve. I label the A and B. The A means Ileo hypoepigastric nerve. B means ileo equinal nerve. So easily, easily to find. Uh, easily to be found. Uh, easily to be found. If we use the tool to pull the spermatic cord, you can find uh, you can find this small area here. We call the transverse fascia, uh, transverse fascia, uh, transverse fascia. Here is the inferior border of the internal brick muscle and the transverse abdominal muscle. Actually, it is superior wall of the equinal canal. Oh, you know, superior wall, inferior wall. Here is the anterior wall. Here, posterior wall. Yeah, this one's, uh, there is a little similar with the last one. Actually, it's a local enlargement here. Superior wall. Actually, it's the inferior border of the internal brick muscle and the transverse abdominis. Here, spermatic cord. But on the posterior view of the abdominal wall, we will find another triangular region. This region, uh, this region, we call the equinal triangle, uh, equinal triangle. Pay attention, uh, 
you have to know its boundary. The medulla is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. The medulla is the lateral border of the rectus, rectus abdominis. The inferior, uh, inferiorly actually is equinal ligament. Superiorly is blood vessel. Ah, uh, it's a blood vessel. What, uh, what's, what's the name? It's a hypoepigastric muscle. Ah, uh, hypoepigastric, hypoepigastric blood vessel, artery and vein. This region, ah, uh, this region, we call the, ah, uh, we call the equinal triangle or Hessenbeck triangle. Ah, uh, Hessenbeck triangle. Uh, let's go on. Yeah, this is right to show us another concept. Here, uh, from the, here, you know, internal oblique muscle, trans transverse abdominal muscle. From this two muscle, there is a small bundle muscle separate from, from this two muscle. S leave them, uh, leave two muscle downward Follow the, the somatic, uh, we call the cremaster. Uh, cremaster. If this muscle contract, the testis will inc will higher become a higher, uh, higher. This muscle, if this muscle contract, the testis will upward, uh, upward. Here, I want to say something about the hernia. Uh, you know, hernia is, is one, uh, is a disease. Uh, what it is, maybe, uh, what's a hernia? Hernia means some again, the abdominal cavity passes through some canal, or some weak area of the abdominal wall, go into the sacrum, uh, go into the sacrum. Uh, sac sacrum. Uh, here, uh, usually the hernia divided two type. One is direct, another one indirect. What's, uh, uh, what's the difference between direct and indirect? So called indirect inguinal hernia means uh, the abdominal again. Uh, Usually, small intestine leaves the abdominal cavity lateral to the inferior epigastric vessel and pass down the equinal canal. About the direct equinal hernia means the again the abdominal, abdominal again leaves the abdominal cavity from the medially to the inferior epigastric vessel. Here. Uh, you can find this one in, indirectly, uh, in, indirect uh, equino hernia. Uh, but this one is direct, uh, direct. Here, usually small intestine, uh, small intestine. Next, next work is di uh, dissect this muscle. Uh, is it? Uh, is it? The first cut along the coastal arch laterally here along the middle axillary line here equinal ligament uh, equinal lig ligament to cut then retract this muscle medially the first uh, incision the second incision the yellow one, uh, the yellow line, a second line. After re reflect the external, uh, uh, external oblique muscle to cut this one, uh, this one. Along this line to cut second layer, internal oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle. 
Then retract the internal oblique muscle. A poses the transverse abdominis. First step, reflect external oblique muscle. Second one, we cut another, we, we made another, another incision. But uh, another incision lo should be located to the medial side, usually 1.5 centimeter long, far from here. Then reflect uh, the internal oblique muscle medially, exposed the transverse abdominis. You can find, uh, you can find the transverse. But how to dissect the rectus abdominis? I suggest uh, first uh, incision here, like this. The first incision. The second, like a uh, Chinese word, uh, gong, uh, gong ren, gong. transverse one, transverse, transverse, cut, cut. Then, after you cut this one, reflect uh, medially and laterally. Then, use your, your handle or index extend to the posterior part of this muscle. It poses the muscle. Another cut. Usually this cut at the level of the umbilicus. Cut. Then reflect upward and lowerward. Expose the posterior layer of the rectus schist. Or rectus schist. After reflect rectus abdominis. Superiorly, inferiorly, you will find the posterior layer of rectus schist. After reflect rectus abdominis, you will find the one paired important muscle. This one we call the superior epigastric artery from the internal thoracic artery. But the lower one, we call the inferior epigastric artery. This artery usually from external iliac artery. These two arteries supply the rectus abdominis. Yeah, this slide shows us the testis, the testis, a descent of the testis. You know, the whole town of the tetis at the, at the early stage, close to the kidney. But uh, before, uh, before the newborn, downward to the sacrum, uh, sacrum. This slide shows us the different layer of abdominal wall downward or continuous with the different layer of the sacrum. I say it again. Uh, actually, the different, the different layer of the abdominal wall downward or continuous with the layer, with the different layer of the sacrum. Uh, sacrum. Well, uh, after you dissect the this is four muscle. Here, cut along the along the axi middle axillary line here. from the cervix here, 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 here. This side, both side, here, here. Then totally reflect the cervix wall, abdominal wall, downward, uh, downward, expose the abdominal again. Uh, next, next class, we will observe the abdominal again. Uh, today, stop here. Uh, finally, cut open abdominal wall and expose the abdominal again in the abdominal cavity. Oh, that's okay. Uh, we can begin our work.